the stream going. Make sure it's heading out to YouTube. Cider live stream is live streaming. All right, we're ready to go. In that case, it's time to say welcome to the monthly general meeting of Apple Cider, uh, Rochester's user group for various Apple devices. We meet monthly at East High School on the second Wednesday of the month. On the third Wednesday next week is our board meeting at Arundel United Church of Christ. Uh, if you're interested in dropping in on that, at the risk of becoming involved. Uh, which happens. Um, you see a board member and, and we'll give you better instructions, but there, there are instructions on the website anyway. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff I normally go through. I don't have it in front of me and I don't think anybody here hasn't heard it before. Do um, we have any visitors? Do we have anyone who's new here? Yes, sir. May I ask your, your name, first name? Chin. Chin? Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, we like to ask people how they found us. Sound bites and, and YouTube. Very good. Yeah. Thank you for reminding Welcome and glad to have you here. Um, and thank you for reminding me that the meeting is streamed on YouTube. And also uh, uh, through the Apple Cider site, you can uh, look at videos of previous meetings. Um, on the Saturday following, the general meeting. Uh, there's a Q&A session at the JCC from two, three to five? Three to five. Three to five. Uh, before that, um, Bob Hoey hosts a Green Apples uh, session at his home for anyone who's uh, interested in uh, exploring various topics. It doesn't, you don't have to be a beginner, um, and, but you can be. Um, he starts about one, Third, one o'clock or so, so that he can finish up in time uh, for people to go to the Q&A at the JCC. Um, his phone number is on the, our website. If you're uh, interested in going, please give him a call so he knows. Um, is he going to be doing that this Saturday? Did he uh, yeah, the, his November meeting, he wants to focus on... Um uh, uh, online gaming, uh, poker, backgammon, Scrabble, etc. Okay. So it doesn't mean doesn't necessarily mean gambling, but just gaming. Um, so you know, Scrabble with other people online. Right, right, good. But uh, online poker is huge. So if you're into that, uh, he's going to show some of that off too. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, tonight, Steve is going to do a follow up on iOS 11, and then Mac OS High Sierra. And, hi, uh, Sierra. Hi, Sierra. <laughs> uh, are you going to do like Q and A stuff? Yeah, we're going to do Q and A stuff and yep, some new stuff. I guess I can probably uh, get out of the way. Alrighty. Thank you all for coming. Um, that's not the news I wanted. I wanted hot news. Um, so, does everyone have their iPhone 10? No. <laughs> Did anyone order one and they're waiting for it to come in? Uh, a couple of the guys in our shop um, uh, got them. Um, they, the pre-orders went on sale um, at midnight Pacific time. So um, you had to get up at 3 a.m. Eastern in order to place your order. Um, apparently they sold out within half an hour um, or less. Um, and then when Tyler, Tyler said he went to the Apple store to pick it up because you pre-order it and then you can either have it delivered to your house uh, or you can uh, um, elect to go to the store and pick it up at a specific time so they schedule a time for you to come in and get it and so he got to the mall and there were hundreds of people waiting in line and one of the ironies and and that has happened lately is that ever since Angela Ahrens um, came in as the head of retail at Apple she has hated those lines and so that's where pre-order started. You can pre-order it. It shows up at your house. You don't have to go wait in line. But there is something to be said about the camaraderie and the social you know, wait in line um, and the fact that you have to get up at 3 a.m. To, uh, to order it. If you waited until you, know, you got up in the morning, um, it probably... Problem? Oh, just switch camera. Thanks. Oh, switch cameras. Thank you. Um, I have to turn 
that camera off. So this camera is on. Yay. Um, and I can make that camera bigger to see me bigger. There we are. Um, yeah, so, so not wanting to get up at 3 a.m. in order to make your, uh, your pre-order here, um, the stores were said to have about 100 um, iPhones ahead of time uh, available for people who didn't pre-order them. And so Tyler was asking people in line, you know, are you all here for pre-orders? And they said, no, no, no. And, and, and so he went up and the, and the clerk said, here, you know, come on inside. Here's your phone and, you know, we'll see you. So it was like 10 minutes there. Um, and and uh, there were people that were able to get a phone um, from the store without pre-ordering it. You just had to wait in line for a couple hours uh, from what most people said. And if you, uh, if you go to order your phone now, um, then um, we're looking at, I think it said, the last time I looked, it was three to four weeks. And we can go say bye and... So if you do want to get one, um, and, and it can depend on the carrier. So if when 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 you go to the store, um, you may not get the carrier you want. So that's that's one big thing that for pre-ordering, uh, to get the carrier you want, the color you want, the silver or the gray, uh, and then the capacity you want. So um, for the T-Mobile uh, Black, it is shipping in three to four weeks. So if you don't have to be the first one on the block to get one. Um, you can uh, you can wait for um, three to four weeks to get one in, uh, just in time for Christmas maybe. There were a lot of people um, buying more than one and then selling them on eBay. Um, there are several people. Um, oops, let's see if it'll correct my spelling for me. Um, yes, I did mean iPhone 10. Thank you. iPhone 10. Um, there are people selling iPhone 10, thank you, um, selling it for ridiculous prices, uh, double retail value in some cases. There was one guy that was asking $15,000 for it. Um, and so, so the joke is you buy two of them, you pre-order two of them, and then sell one, which then finances the one you keep, because uh, you can get as much or, or more than the uh, actual retail price. Now. A lot of times that's for people in other countries. And so it's very common uh, for people to wait in line and then ship them uh, to Hong Kong or Singapore um, to, uh, to be sold, which is interesting and, and kind of ironic because they're made in, in Shenzhen, China, uh, which is, I think, on the west coast of China. And then, uh, and then they get shipped over here and shipped back to Hong Kong on the east coast of China. Um, and that didn't... Uh, yeah, let me fix this. I have to do... There we are. Now you'll get that screen. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. Um, so yeah, so we can see what has been, what has sold. And somewhere, 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 somewhere. Buy it now. Shipping. Show only sold. But the iPhone 10 was available in 55 countries at launch. Uh, so here's somebody paid $12.90 for a 64 gig. Um, when the retail was 9.99, 14.50. Well, that was the 2.56. Uh, that was the, so that was 11, 11.50, I think. So the, people are paying a premium, which is uh, silly. Um, but we some we sometimes joke that people just don't want to wait in line. They don't want to have to order it, but they want it the day one to have the status symbol. Um, and so they're willing to pay more than, uh, than retail for it. Um, oh, you, you, yeah, you, so it looks like they're going for about 1400 1500 Now here's 1500 for the 64 gig, which was the 999 So they're paying a 50% premium to get it early. Um, stupid people. <laughs> but if you really wanted it, sure. Um, and let me get back to my hot news. So we're seeing uh, cases have started coming out uh, already as well. Um, and then um, uh, 13 additional countries available in. So that brings it up to, what, 68 countries available. Uh, we, uh, pe people were wondering how many each country got. Um, so Andover, which is a, um, not Andover, and Andor, Andorra, 
um, was listed as one of the countries, and we were wondering, did they get one for the whole country? <laughs> um, yeah, let's skip the facts, tax stuff for now. Um, <laughs> well, the biggest features in iPhone 10 are the bigger screen. So it's the screen is the size of a plus model, but the phone is only the size of a standard um, phone. Let me get back and see if I can show those size comparisons. So you're getting a, um, a bigger phone for a bigger screen in a smaller phone. So a lot of people like the really big screens, but they don't like the um, f huge phones. How many people have an iPhone Plus size versus the standard size? Yeah, so the Plus is pretty big. I've got, I've got a standard size one. And so the iPhone 10, the screen is the size of the Plus, but the phone itself is the size of a standard um, because there's no bezels. So when you look at your phone, there's, there's bezels at the top and bottom um, that cut out from the size of the screen. So it's nice to have a bigger screen with a smaller um, uh, size. And there is a compare button here somewhere. There we are, there's my compare button. Um, there is something interesting to be said. So here's, here's the size of the plus versus the size of the 10 uh, physically, but the screen is, is almost the same size between them. Um, a lot of people have joked about the chin or the notch uh, or the horns, if you look at the screen lit up. And, uh, and in that chin is where the cameras and face detection sensors are. So there's, the, um, there's like 12 different components in that area. Uh, they could have decided to not include the horns and just have a, have, a, have a straight across for everything, but they put the horns in. And the horns are used for your status uh, icons, your Wi-Fi strength, your battery strength, uh, cellular strength. Um, and that's also where you swipe down to get the um, uh, notification manager. So they're using that bit of the screen. And programmers and developers, when they write their programs, they can decide if they want to use that screen area or they can have it stop at the edge of the notch and so their, their program doesn't, doesn't fill that whole notch area. Um, the other big feature is uh, the Animoji. Um, so in iOS 11, um, the, there's 50-some uh, new emoji that they also added to the Mac. We're going to look at some of those um, shortly. And, uh, oh, no, I missed it. There we are. So a lot of different emoji for different, um, uh, different emotions. So in the early days of computing, you couldn't put emotion through, through the computer, so we used smiley faces. You know, uh, um, uh, those of you that are old enough might remember. Um, uh, colon and then close parenthesis was a smiley face, and you turn your head sideways and it looks like a smiley face. Well then when we got actual graphic capable computers, we started doing um, more actual smileys. Uh, and so we can have a smiley face, and then as computers got even more sophisticated, they added more and more um, uh, types of pictures. And so they were originally called emoticons, or emotional icons. Um, and then they got, got named emoji, uh, which is a Japanese word for, for these little pictures. And so in, in iPhone 10, you have the option to make an animated emoji as your face. Um, and uh, the animojis um, have uh, become... Um, uh, iPhone, I've got to find that picture. Uh, they've become quite uh, popular. Um, there was an internet meme for quite a while. Uh, they had a really good uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah. So you would s you send a message to someone, and you're using. Oops. Uh, let me see if I can bring the volume up a little higher.
And we're getting to the guitar solo. Oh, where'd it go? There we are. <laughs> so the Animoji feature maps your face um, because it has the face detection built in for unlocking the phone. So it'll map your face onto one of these emojis. And so it, it knows your head movements and your mouth movements, your eye movements. Um, and so you can send messages to other people using, uh, using these animated emoji. Um, and of course, people are making some pretty uh, um, strange and pretty animated um, videos that are coming out on the, on the net. Um, the, the Queen one was probably one of the uh, first uh, real popular ones I saw. Um, and then um, some of the Animoji uh, um, that are available. Uh, let's see if I can find the list. I go here. There we go, Animoji in the emoji. So we've got um, the, uh, uh, bring these up a little bigger, the alien, the cat face. So when um, uh, they were demoing this on stage, um, they asked Tim Cook what emoji he was going to be, and of course, he was the alien, taking me to your leader, uh, the monkey fan, and the pile of poo tends to be the, the, the one that people play with the most. You can be an animated pile of poo. Um, so it, most of, oh, I didn't know they were bigger. Um, most of the other features of, on, on iOS uh, are, are built into iOS that you get with the other phones. Um, the biggest thing is the face unlock. Uh, which works pretty well. Um, you can set it. Normally, you have to have your eyes open. Um, I forget what they call it, but you have to be, in essence, it tries to, to test if you're alive or not. Um, and um, here's, let me get to the poo. There we go, animated poo. Um, and so there were, there were cases with the fingerprint reader of children um, buying things on the app store and then when it comes to confirm the purchase, they you know, touch sleeping mommy's thumb to the, to the uh, fingerprint reader and actually buy something. Yeah, so now uh, with the face, face detection, you, uh, um, um, you have to be aware and looking at the camera in order for it to work. But there is a relaxed mode where your eyes don't have to be open. And so if you have small children that, that know how to buy things, <laughs> You probably don't want to turn that feature on um, because uh, uh, you don't want it to be able to, you know, hold, hold, hold it up to your face while you're sleeping and, and have it uh, authorize a purchase. Um, the face detection has been a point of concern. In fact, uh, Senator L. Franken, um, uh, face ID white paper. Uh, L. Franken did a, uh, uh, sent a question to, to Tim Cook and so Apple published a white paper on Face ID security and explained how it worked. Um, if, you're, if you're into security, there are a couple of diagrams in here that were interesting. Um, you can, you can take a read through that. One of the things that was interesting is, is they talked about the 30,000 dot, um, uh, dot projector that, that, that maps your face, and then that's how it builds a 3D model of your face. Every phone uses a different pattern of 30,000 dots. So you can't record somebody um, uh, with that dot pattern and then use it on another phone. So every phone has a unique dot pattern. Um, and so a Apple said that the, with the fingerprint ID, the risk of a duplication is about 1 in 50,000. And we've heard anecdotal, anecdotal stories about people who have ha asked their friends to try the, the touch ID. Um, and their friend can get in because the fingerprints are close enough. Um, and especially if you have trained it more than one of your fingers, um, then it, it almost gets to be a little sloppier, and so close enough gets to be farther away. Uh, but with face detection and face ID, it's supposed to be one in a million, uh, which is a lot, uh, a lot, a lot higher. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there have been a few cases like that where uh, you either hand your phone to your spouse or or, or a significant other for 
for them to, for some reason, and they go snooping in your contacts or and your messages. Uh, and there have been cases where you know somebody just touches touches your finger to it. One of the interesting implications um, is is a legal aspect. Um, if you get pulled over uh, in a traffic stop, it's been becoming very common for the police to ask for your phone um, and ask you to unlock your phone so they can rummage through your contacts. Um, there were there were some early reports that it was um, at the behest of the recording industry of America to make sure you didn't have any pirated music. And the, the general question was, well, how do they know? So I have a song on my phone. How do they know I don't have the CD at home in order to prove that I actually bought it versus stole it? Um, and, uh, and there were a lot of reports about borders um, being uh, uh, having your devices confiscated at the border. And courts have ruled that a passcode, something you know, cannot be um, forced from you under Fifth Amendment protection. Um, you can be holding contempt and thrown in jail for contempt, but, but they can't force you to, to divulge your passcode. But your fingerprints can be forced from you by court order. And um, so there's been a question about having Touch ID on your phone that if the police stop you, they can force you to, to put your finger on it to, uh, to unlock your phone. Um, so with Face ID, it, they, it's, they, they're, they're people are the uh, uh, ACLU and, and the uh, EFF is uh, working on it too, are afraid that it's going to be a little, a little worse because they can just hold the phone in front of you and unlock your phone. So there's actually a, um, uh, George? Yeah, so if, if you type in your password wrong too many times, or your touch, touch ID, well, with either face ID or touch ID, if you get too many wrongs, then it locks you out and you have to type your code in. So there's always your passcode underneath the either, even Face ID or Touch ID. But at some point, doesn't it break your phone? No. Oh, never. Well, d d maybe. Um, <laughs> if you type it, if so, then if you type your passcode wrong too many times, I think it's ten, it will stop and make you wait a minute. And then if you type it ten wrong times again, you have to wait five minutes. And then if you write ten wrong times again, you have to wait an hour. And so every time you type it too many wrong times, that time gets longer and longer and longer. So what I was thinking is, you know, regular, uh, little app that you just hit the app and it, and it does well, the queries and, and so bef you can never get in. Yeah, before that, what, that, that is one of the ways that um, um, third-party hackers get into the phone and, and law enforcement has been known to use these um, and buy these tools. Um, the counter on how many wrong attempts you get is set in memory. So if you try once and reboot, then the counter never goes to 10. You can actually set your phone to erase itself after 10 wrong tries. And if you're in uh, you know, a highly, highly secure or medical or legal thing like that, you might want to do that. Um, so, it, so it actually does erase itself after too many wrong tries. Um, so, so what they do is, you know, they, they have a box they plug your phone into. It tries a number and then reboots, so that the counter never gets to ten. And so that was sort of the joke about a four-digit passcode. There's only ten thousand combinations. Give it to an intern to try every combination. He'll probably get it in a day, maybe two, just to punch in ten thousand numbers. So that's one reason they went to a six-digit passcode by default. Now you're looking at you know uh, 100 million potential passcodes, and that, that's infeasible to have someone manually try them all. But you can have a computer try them all over and over and over again really fast. So, so on the iPhone 10, there is a, there is a new thing that people are calling cop mode. Um, if you, uh, I've got to find what button it is. If you, here we go. If you push the sleep button t uh, five times, um, so, so let me back up half a step. Every now and then, even with Touch ID and Face ID, it will ask you for your passcode to verify it's still really you. After it reboots, it will ask for your passcode before Face ID or Touch ID works. So you might notice that on your phones now. Um, there's an update and it reboots or it crashes and it reboots. You have to put your, your passcode in. So they've added a Touch ID emergency. So if you push the sleep button five times, it will force it to request the passcode. So if you're getting pulled over by the cops and you think they're going to take your phone, hit the Touch ID five times, which, which is a little faster than turning it off. 
and, and you can so so to turn it off, you have to hold hold the sleep button and then swipe. But you know you can you can be you know have your phone behind you and hit the button five times, <laughs> um, and they may not notice it. Um, then then they have to get you to divulge your passcode, which is protected and the different legal issues. Um, so some people are calling that cop mode, um, where you press it five times and then and then you uh, have to. In fact, it's gotten so bad we we've heard about. Um, uh, what, what, what was it called? Cop mugging. So the police are, are, they want to arrest someone, but they want to make sure they have access to their phone. They'll call that person or wait until they get a call. And when you, when you answer your phone, you've unlocked the phone. So then the cop will jump him and someone will grab the phone away before they can lock the phone again. And, uh, and so we're hearing these interesting stories. And so the, the, um, 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 uh, AFL-CIO is, is, is looking into that. EFF is looking into it to, 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 uh, to try to curb that type of, uh, of, uh, of behavior. Um, let's see. I think... Did we pass a quarter? I think we did have Apple, yeah, Apple's fourth quarter results, um, uh, which um, was last quarter. So what happens is... At, we're now in Apple's first fiscal quarter, so Christmas is in the first quarter. So a lot of companies do that, so their first quarter earnings are fantastic because that's when Christmas is. Uh, so fourth quarter is generally a little slower, but fourth quarter is when the phone came out, but maybe not available in high quantities. Um, and, and it's a little weird this year because we had the 8 and the 10. So a lot of people bought an 8 um, because they have to have the new phone and buy a 10 because they have the new phone and then sell the 8. Some people are, are waiting to get the 10 and so didn't buy an 8, so it's this weird phone thing. Um, but Apple's um, uh, quarter, quarterly report was uh, still um, uh, stellar. Uh, $47 billion in revenue uh, in the quarter, not, not the year, $47 billion in the quarter, um, $9 billion in, uh, in uh, uh, income, and uh, they still sold a crap load of, of things. Um, they don't break it out as much, but some of the other websites did break down uh, how many millions of everything they sold. Um, I think iMore had a uh, iMore and oh, Jason Snell on um, on uh, Mac um, Six Colors had a really good uh, uh, bunch of articles. And 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 um, I can't talk and type at the same time. And and broke out the units. Um, there we go, 2017. And if you look at each one of Apple's uh, main product lines, uh, no, this is just a transcript of the call. So the um, uh, computers and phones and services and, um, oh, what was the fourth? So computers is desktop and laptop, phones, phones, no, f iPads. So iPads uh, are separated from phones. Um, they did um, uh, 76 million, yeah, 70, 76 million phones in the quarter. Um, and if you look at each of their businesses separately, then each business would be a Fortune 500 company. And so all the stories about I, uh, iPad sales are slowing down and Mac sales are slowing down, maybe, but the whole industry is slowing down and there's still... Um, uh, uh, an amazing amount of revenue, and so iPhone is making more th more than half of Apple's revenue, uh, and the Mac is still a, a pretty decent revenue. Uh, services is an interesting part. That's the um, uh, Apple iCloud services. So sales on iTunes, uh, App Store, Bookstore, Music Store, uh, and the um, um, iCloud storage. Um, Apple is still one of the companies that gives the least amount of free storage, only five gigabytes free. Uh, and uh, you have to pay 99 cents a month to get 50 gigs. But 99 cents a month is such a small number, millions of people are doing it. And so we don't know how many hundreds of millions of extra dollars that is at 99 cents a month, but it makes up 16% of Apple's revenue. Um, and here is uh, um, their revenue. So you can sort of see, you know, first quarter's big and then, and then it, sl it slows down through the quarters. Um, and let's see, iPhone 10, that was sales. iPad sales um, follow the same sort of trend. First quarter is high and the next quarters are lower. Um, 
We did have the uh, new iPad Pro came out fourth quarter, so that was a big thing. Uh, Mac sales are, uh, are very high again, 25% um, uh, higher over last year. Uh, and some of that is the new uh, laptops that are, are now shipping in quantity. Um, so a, a lot, there's a lot of analysts that are, are worried about Apple's stock prices. And it, it's so funny that they announced these massive revenues on great earnings. They exceeded expectations, but the stock goes down. Um, so the stock market is one of those things that no one can figure out. And, and if you can, um, go for it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's it's it it isn't a there's services. It isn't a um, uh, uh, a problem f as it, from an individual standpoint. The Apple Watch is is considered part of the um, uh, iPhone area, um, and uh, Apple. Uh, uh, Steve, uh, yeah, Steve Cook. Steve Cook, uh, <laughs> Tim Cook uh, said at the announcement that uh, the Apple Watch is now the number one selling watch in the world. Um, last year they were number two behind Rolex. They uh, they have uh, beat Rolex. Um, we're pretty sure that well, we're not sure whether that's revenue or units. Uh, but in in either case, in fact, that might be in here somewhere. In either case, that is uh, that's amazing. And. Many of the other smartwatch companies, uh, LG and Motorola, have been cutting back on their um, smartwatches because they aren't, in their minds, they're not selling well. Um, but uh, especially the um, um, iWatch second generation that added the better fitness tracking and now the third generation that adds the um, cellular service so you can use your watch without having your phone nearby um, really adds to the versatility of it. And it does seem to be the um, um, moving into more of a fitness arena. So what, the first couple revisions of the Apple Watch, Apple wasn't quite sure what you were, people would do with it. Um, and it now, now looks like fitness is the big thing people are using it for. Um, in the in the, the the first revision or so, it was it was the notifications were supposed to be big. You know, you get a notification, you look at your wrist instead of pulling your phone out of your pocket. Um, but now it's it tends to be the fitness aspects, uh, the heart rate monitors. That there's a lot of a uh, lot coming in the health arena. They've had several people um, have been saved. Uh, their life has been saved by their um, iWatch uh, uh, finding a heart arrhythmia. And saying, you know, you better go to your doctor. Your heart rate is, is acting weird. Call your doctor. Um, and they're working on a blood glucose um, monitor, non-invasive blood glucose monitor for diabetics. You don't ha won't have to prick your finger all the time. And that's, that's kind of the, uh, the holy grail of medical, wearable medical devices. If you can do that without needing to draw a blood sample, that's, that's going to be a big thing. All right. Anybody else have any other major news that has come out? Did we talk about the crack and the uh, and the Roca breaches last? Uh, I don't know if they were out last uh, last month. Um, there are there is a wireless. No, I didn't mean crackle. I meant crack. There is a wireless um, breach um, uh, called crack. Uh, the key key replay attack that um, has been patched in the latest uh, OSs. So again, it's what we say, keep up to date on your, on your OS updates. It's been patched. There's a four-way handshake between a base station and a device. So when your computer joins uh, a wireless base station, um, there's a four-way handshake to get all that set up. And the researchers figured out a way to stop at step three and then part of that exchange is, is the, each end exchanging random numbers. And because those numbers are random, there's no way for a man in the middle to figure out what the traffic is. The, they figured out a way to stop at step three and put a null number in. Well, now we've got a random number and nothing. Now we know how to, how to, fi how to figure it out. So it, it's, um, it still takes a man in the middle between you and your base station. Um, and to, to, to get in. And then what they can do is replay that key and join a protected network without knowing the password. It lets them figure out what the key to the Wi-Fi is. So we've been recommending to people to stop joining new networks, networks that you've already joined, you've already um, communicated with, and 
this is only, uh, it's, it's a first tier on the wireless security. The next step is, would typically in your browser, you would then, you know, you go to Amazon and it's encrypted. You go to your bank and it's encrypted. So the encryption on your computer is not broken. It's only the encryption on the Wi-Fi that's theoretically possible for someone to, uh, to, to breach. Um, and all the vendors have updated. The real danger is if you have a very old phone, um, especially an old Android phone that won't get updated, you might still be vulnerable to the crack attack. Uh, and, the, and the only mitigation is don't use Wi-Fi uh, or don't, don't join unknown networks, only the network that it already knows that it can, it can uh, join again. There was a bigger um, uh, breach in, um, was it Roka? Yeah, um, called Roka that didn't get as much press and, and, and it, it's potentially much more of a problem. Um, some people are saying because it doesn't have a cool name, it didn't make the press. There was a vulnerability found in an encryption chip from Infineon to generate encryption keys. So all of the encryption we use on the internet to protect ourselves are, are done with what's called a public and private key pair. And those encryption keys are generated with very long prime numbers. And what was found is there was a mistake in one of the Infineon libraries that they weren't using long enough numbers, so it's easy to break the encryption key. Um, with the, the, the way public key encryption works, you multiply two giant prime numbers and there's no way to factor that number very easily to get those two prime numbers back. But because of this flaw in the encryption um, uh, hardware, the key generated is weak and can be um, uh, refactored to, uh, to, to, to be broken. The problem is this Inf Infineon was used in hundreds of millions of devices, um, uh, uh, possibly uh, as many as a billion devices around the world. Um, it's used in the trusted platform module inside every Intel motherboard. Um, and so virtually every PC is vulnerable to this attack if you created hardware-based encryption keys. If you use PGP to do a software encryption key or you're using um, uh, LastPass or 1Password or, or Apple Keychain, it, it creates software encryption keys. Those are okay. Um, but if you have a hardware encryption key, um, it is most likely vulnerable. There is a website, if I can find it here, that you can, uh, you can put in your public key and um, it will tell you if your um, uh, key is vulnerable. Here it is, keychest.net. So you, you can put in your public key and um, if it will tell you if that key is vulnerable or not, then so you can generate a new key. So if you have a hardware-based security token, and a lot of, of secure businesses will use uh, an RSA key or a Yuba key, um, a little hardware key that generates random numbers, those hardware keys are uh, potentially vulnerable and um, you, uh, you want to check with your company to, to get a replacement with, uh, with, a, with a fixed chip in it. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the iPhone 10 is still using a lightning connector, um, but the big, uh, the big thing with the iPhone 8 and 10 is wireless charging. So you don't need to plug in a cable to charge it. We are envisioning maybe the next model or the model after that will have no cable connections. So they already took the headphone jack out, which is um, um, an issue with uh, waterproofing because you have a hole there. Um, and the rumors are they're going to remove the lightning port because you can have wireless charging and Bluetooth peripherals. You may not need to plug anything in. Um, and that will be able to seal the phone up even more. But so many people are using wired headphones um, that on the iPhone 7, when they removed the headphone jack you, and went to lightning, they included a lightning to headphone adapter, um, which people easily lose. So that, that was a big complaint. And um, Apple sells these really cool AirPods. No, don't start. Sorry. Apple sells these really cool AirPods. Um, and many other companies sell uh, Bluetooth headsets and, and Bluetooth peripherals. Um, so we'll, we're 
probably start shifting more into that as they uh, take out the, um, the lightning port, maybe on the next version. The other question is next year, are we going to see a 9 that will be an evolution of the 8, and then, then an 11 that's an evolution of the 10, or are they just going to skip 9 altogether? So we'll have to see what happens next year. Yeah, they, they, might, they might go X.1. Instead of, instead of XI for 11, they might go X.1. But we went all through this when OS 10 came out with an X. It was OS 9, then OS 10. And we, at the time, they used a Roman numeral because it was a complete rewrite. It was a um, uh, Unix-based, and so it was, it, was, it was the whole underlying OS. So it, it sort of made sense that it was massively different. But then for years especially on, on, on the uh, uh, general news, no one knew whether to call it OS X or OS X. And, and we're, now we're hearing the same thing again. Is it iPhone X or is it iPhone X? And from Apple, it is 10. It's a Roman numeral 10. It's pronounced 10. But people still accidentally call it X. Yeah. John? Yes. Right. A lot of hearing aids these days, in fact, I, I would guess most of them now, um, are Bluetooth capable. So you pair your hearing aid to your phone, and then when you can answer a phone call, it uses your existing hearing aids, or an listening to music uses your existing hearing aids. So you don't have to uh, wear, wear headphones or, or try, to, try to put a headphone into your hearing aid to, to, uh, to use that with a hearing. Anyone have Bluetooth, Bluetooth hearing aids? I have a couple of people we've uh, we've seen at work um, uh, talk about them, and, and they work pretty good. There was, yeah, in the iPhone 10, um, there were I think three. Um, um, the batteries started swelling, and it popped the case apart. Um, no, it wasn't the 10; it was the 8. We haven't seen it on the uh, on the 10 yet. Um, and one of the things, did they have a picture? Yeah, so it, it pops open. Um, and that's a good thing, that it pops open because then it, it can, it, it tells you there's something wrong with the battery, um, and you can get it fixed. And it also doesn't hold it in. Um, you probably remember the Samsung battery problem where the phones would burst into flames. Part of that was because the case didn't split open to let it dissipate some of that energy. Um, and uh, there was a, uh, um, uh, the final report they, they published was that the battery was too big for the case. And when they squeezed the, 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 the two halves of the phone closed, they were squeezing the battery. And one of the things that the lithium polymer batteries really hate is, is um, being squeezed, poked, prodded, dropped, and, you know, anything like that. Um, and it uh, can eventually, especially if, if it gets breached, it can cause a runaway thermal reaction. And the uh, capacitance fluid inside the batteries is flammable. And so that bursts into, into pretty flames. Um, there is a, uh, uh, there was a battery, new battery report that came out. So, uh, the quest for a better battery is, is huge in material science. Um, we've seen a couple of them that are now using a, a solid capacitance fluid. So instead of having a fluid uh, inside the battery, it uses, it uses a solid polymer. Um, and there's another battery that's using asphalt. They, they add some asphalt to the capacitance fluid, it, and it, it, it helps the battery uh, survive um, uh, impact and damage, and it actually adds a little bit to the energy density. So that's, uh, that, that's the next big thing especially with electric cars, you know, half of an electric car's weight is the lithium batteries they use. And um, there's a big concern about um, uh, car accidents with uh, you know, lithium batteries. But people forget you're driving around with 20 gallons of gasoline, hugely explosive flammable gasoline in your car. Um, and if, if one of the jokes is if, if a gasoline engine car had to be uh, uh, made brand new today, it would never get through the safety regulations. Just, do you want to drive around with 20 gallons of explosive fluid in your, in your vehicle? No. <laughs> but we get safe. Yeah, Chris? Uh, did I hear this very possibly compared to uh, iPhone 10, but I can't 
So Apple, uh, Apple repair prices. Um, right now, um, every iPhone X is under, under warranty. So uh, the 8 and 10s you don't have to worry about um, because they're still under warranty. One of our recommendations is to buy the Apple Care Plus. So what you, have, what you would pay for in a um, uh, phone repair would be physical damage. You drop it and break it, usually the screen. Um, with the early iPhones, the screens are about $150 to, to, uh, to replace. Uh, the iPhone Plus is, uh, is, I think, $175. I'll find it here in a minute. There we are. Um, and if you have Apple Care Plus, then it is $99 to um, fix anything. That's just that's anything. Where's the screen? I want just screen. Um, with Apple Care Plus, a screen replacement is $25. There we go, screen damage. So we strongly recommend adding Apple Care Plus. There we go. So if, uh, if you have uh, you know, um, a, an iPhone with Apple Care Plus, it's $29 to replace the screen. On the iPhone 10, since the screen is, is, part of that is because it's so new and so much more costly to, to build, um, it's a higher cost to repair as well. So Apple Care Plus is like $129, and um, that is well worth it in the, uh, in the cheaper costs of uh, physical damage repairs. And Apple Care Plus also extends your hardware warranty to uh, two full years. So you get two years of, of warranty, you get accidental damage coverage, and, uh, and then you sell it and buy the next new phone because there's a new phone every year. Uh, but because of the, the expense of the phone itself and, and how new all the components are in it, that's one of the reasons the out-of-warranty repair prices are higher. So a screen out-of-warranty is two seventy nine. dollars A um, whole unit out-of-warranty is five forty nine. dollars So it's half the price of a phone, which is nice. It's only half the price to f fix the phone that you dropped and broke uh, instead of $1,000 for, uh, for a new phone. Um, but we're, we're sort of seeing prices of flagship phones are creeping up to and have now exceeded that $1,000 mark. The iPhone 10, uh, the Samsung Note 8, um, there's an LG that's pushing $1,000 too. So there are some really uh, uh, high ones. But one thing that Apple does um, do is they keep all their old models around. So you can still get an iPhone SE, which is basically a 5, starting at 329 so if you want a brand new iPhone, you can get one for three twenty nine, um, flat out. Or um, most of the carriers will, will will sell it to you on a monthly payment plan. It's not a contract anymore; it's a payment plan. Same thing; you pay every month, <laughs> um, but it's uh, it's uh, less than uh, buying them outright. I don't think so. Um, not that I've seen a a and. It's almost impossible to calculate odds because there's too many variables. Uh, we've seen people that if the phone lands flat, um, it won't crack at all. If it lands on its edge or at a slight angle, it will crack. If it's on a hardwood floor or, or concrete, it will crack. If it's on a carpet or um, 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 something else, it won't crack. So there's just too many variables. I don't know. Um, it's assumed that it's using Corning uh, Gorilla Glass 3, uh, although Apple doesn't say, but Corning is one of the vendors listed when you go to Apple's vendor page. Um, and when you go to Corning's um, su um, supplier page, Apple's listed, but they don't specifically say who their components are made from. Um, iFixit, I wonder if they were able to figure it out. Uh, iFixit is a website um, that's known for their take-apart uh, guides and their... Um, um, repair parts, and let's go to iPhone 10. Oops, iPhone 10, and they have an iPhone 10 take apart guide where they tear the whole thing apart. Let um, me just go down to the bottom and show you all the pieces. Oh, too far because there's comments. So there's all the pieces that make up an iPhone 10. Um, what's what's really interesting now is the battery is in an L shape. Previous phones, the battery was uh, was just a rectangle. Um, and so they, they were able to tear the whole thing apart. They x-ray a lot of the chips to figure out what chips are on the boards. Um, and uh, they did end up breaking the glass 
trying to uh, uh, get the glass off the phone. So it's glued down really good. Um, but it's, it's kind of interesting to watch the, uh, the teardowns and see some of the x-rays. They try to figure out, um, where's the logic board? Uh, they try to figure out what pieces are where on the logic board, you know, who's, you know, what chips are there, what they're used for. Just, just how many components are part of this uh, logic board is just amazing. But it'll always break when you drop it. When your friend drops it, it never breaks. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. So, so the issue is with the, ch the, the wireless charging. It's using the Qi standard, um, QI, uh, whoever came up with the Chinese pronunciation and spelling differences should be shot. Uh, <laughs> the QI doesn't spell Qi. You, know, you, could, you, could, you could have spelled it with, uh, with better English letters. But um, um, there are a lot of other phones that use the Qi uh, uh, standard. Um, that's the same Qi as your, your, the energy flow in your body. Um, and, and Apple is coming out with their own charger. Uh, they don't have one listed here at the moment on, uh, on the wire cutter page. But when you put a case on your charger, then the, the magnetic field has to go through that case. So if it's a metal case, it may really block the, the charging capability. If it's a plastic or rubber case or wood case, it, it won't block it as much. Um, so depending on what case you have, you may need to get a... Um, 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 a different case or a, a higher charger. One of the things that Apple is going to add, um, it's not available yet. Oh, there's the Belkin one. Uh, Apple is coming out with something they're calling the uh, AirPad. So when you do your wireless charging, you set your phone down on a charger. You don't have to plug it in. You just uh, set it down. The charger itself is plugged into the wall. And we've heard from people that um, uh, you know, like have, the, have the phone on your bedside table, rolling over and bumping the table through the night knocks the phone off the charger, so then it, uh, it doesn't charge um, uh, that night. And so it's what do you mean stack them? No. Um, they can't stack on top of each other because the rest of the components of the phone block the, the charging uh, signal. Um, but what Apple is coming out with, and I can't find it at the moment, um, is, uh, is it Air Power? Air Power charger. Um, is they're going to have a, a mat available for, um, there we go. It's wide enough, you can put three devices on it. Uh, and they're coming out with a new AirPod um, um, charging case that will have inductive charging in it too. So you can lay your phone down, your watch down, and your, and your AirPod charger down, uh, and it's wide enough to do all three at the same time. And that is supposed to be coming out um, next year, I think it was. It might, uh, might say here. But because Apple is using the Qi standard, you can use Qi uh, chargers from uh, virtually any other device and, and other companies as well. So while um, uh, you don't have, uh, well, the Apple one is not available yet, you can get third-party ones. Um, so it depends on how, how big the s pad is. And, and, and do I still have that iFixit window open? Um, you can see in the, uh, in the iFixit teardown how big, there it is, that's the charging pad, that big black thing. So it uses a very big charging pad, so you don't have to set it exactly on top of the charger uh, for it to work. Yeah, you can plug the lightning cable in directly. There, they took off the, uh, the charging pad. Alrighty. Um, 
I guess we've kind of moved into Q&A. Anyone, anyone have any other questions? iFixit gives it a 6 out of 10 on repairability. Yeah, induction charging, it's, it's a magnetic field that in, in induces a magnetic field on the other side that creates an electric field. Yeah, don't put your hard drives on a magnet. There were, there were, there were a lot of early stories we read in the, in the early floppy disk days where people would take the floppy disk out of the computer and then with a magnet stick it to the file cabinet. Yep. And wonder why the, uh, their disk uh, died every night. All right, John, did I see a question? Yes, uh, well, my Oh, never touch the music folder in your computer. Never touch that. Always use iTunes. Um, the iTunes organizes the files the way it wants them organized inside the music folder. Um, and, so, and if you change something in there, then iTunes doesn't know what it is, and iTunes quits working with those, with those songs. Right. Um, so just leave everything in the music folder as, uh, as it puts it there when you, when you rip it in. There is, well, uh, we'll get to that in half a second. There is uh, an option to keep the music folder organized um, so then it, it organizes it by um, artist and by album and then um, I think genre there in, in there too. But it does that folder for you and you don't need to deal with it. Um, one of the problems with asking for passwords is when you buy a song from the iTunes store, you buy it with an Apple ID and password. If you then log in with a different Apple ID, it wants that first password to play that song. And Be because you're not supposed to be moving things around in those folders. So that's a system level thing and it wants your system password to do that. So don't move anything in the iTunes folder. Um, and for those of you that may not have found it before, in your, uh, in your music folder is an iTunes folder, and that has your iTunes music in it, which is all um, organized. If I go into my music, it's organized by group. If you do things in this folder, iTunes won't know it. So if you delete something from that folder, iTunes won't know it's been deleted, and it will try to play it. And if you add something to that folder, iTunes won't know it, and it won't know how to play it. There is a folder in there called Automatically Add to iTunes. So if you, if you buy music from another store um, and want to put it in iTunes, you can drop it into that folder. Or just, you know, you buy it from the Amazon store, just drop it into the iTunes library. And then iTunes will add it to the library itself um, and, and organize it itself. Uh, but generally speaking, you shouldn't do anything in this music folder because iTunes won't know what's, uh, what's been done. Um, It depends on where you put them originally. And if you had that organized um, uh, uh, library turned on first. So if, you ha if, if this Keep iTunes folder organized was not turned on at some point, then the songs are loose in, uh, in folders in the music folder. They added this organization uh, option a little later as well. There's also an option to copy the music when adding to the library which then keeps everything in your library. So say you download a song from Amazon, it's in your downloads folder. You then put it into iTunes, it's still in your downloads folder. And then you delete it from downloads, iTunes doesn't know it's there anymore. So you should have this copy to iTunes checked on. So when you put something in iTunes, it copies it into the library and isn't then scattered all around your, uh, your hard drive. There is a command under library called organize 
which will go through all of the files in your library. And if um, uh, things are not in the iTunes folder, you can tell it to consolidate them. And so if you've dragged music in from other folders, it will suck them into the iTunes folder. So, there, so all of your music is in one place. One of the advantages of doing that, keeping all your music in that one folder, um, is handy on laptops if, and if you have large uh, music libraries. You can put your music library on a different hard drive. So you're, here you can tell it where your iTunes folder is. So you can have your music on an external hard drive. Uh, or what some people even do is they'll get an iTunes music server, and which is just another computer sits on their network, and you put all your music on there, and then every computer can see all of the music. Um, Apple's way to do that is to put all your music in the cloud um, and, uh, and buy, everything, buy everything from iTunes uh, store, and then it's, that's in the cloud and in your library. They have a service called iTunes Match, so for $10 a year, music that you don't buy from iTunes will also be synced through the iTunes cloud, so you can see those songs on your other devices as well. And then when you rip a CD, take a, a physical CD and rip it into the computer, then those songs are copied into the iTunes folder as well, but only on that one computer. If you turn on iTunes Match, then it will send it to all, all your other devices through the cloud. Um, I think one of the limitations is iTunes Match will only do 100,000 songs. And um, there are people that have more, um, uh, more songs than that and, and are annoyed that it only works with 100,000. Uh, I probably won't be able to find it very easily. There it is, yeah, 100,000 songs. Yeah, yeah and, and a lot of times finding duplicates is tough because the same song title could be used by many different bands. The same band can release the same song on a bunch of different albums. So it's technically not a duplicate, but it is a duplicate. It just comes on different albums. Um, I, uh, iTunes has a um, command somewhere. Yeah, showed, um, where is it? There's a command to only, to, so it'll find duplicates for you. I don't know if I have. Let me do. I'm viewing by music. This is my library. There it is. Show duplicates. So in my library, I've only got 12 duplicates. Um, some of them might be duplicates. Some of them might not be. So here's one song that's on two different albums. So depending on how you define duplicate, that's a duplicate song. But it's on two different albums, so that's not a duplicate song. One's a studio album, one's a live album. So that's not a duplicate. Uh, but this one uh, looks like it probably is a duplicate that came in because somebody typed with a capital D and somebody typed with a lowercase d. So when you, when you rip a CD into your computer, it goes to the CD uh, database on the internet and finds those tracks and track names. The, the, the song names are not stored on the CD. Um, they're, they're in the CDDB. Uh, or a, a grace note now since they bought uh, uh, CDDB. And so what happens is if you are lucky enough to be the very first person to rip a brand new CD anywhere in the world, you get to type the names in. Or wait a minute and someone else will have. So if you type the names wrong, then everyone else who rips that song will get those wrong names. In fact, sometimes when you rip a CD, it will, it will bring up a list you know, it doesn't know, is this the live album or the studio album or, you know, this album or that album, so it'll give you a list to pick from to get the right album in. Yep, uh, I can just hit the delete key, and it will remove it from the song, uh, remove it from the library. Um, you can have it never ask you again. I like being asked when I want to delete something. So I'm going to say uh, delete, delete or cancel. Yep, see, now I would play, ah, this one's explicit too. So this one might be the radio version that's, that's clean lyrics and this is the explicit version um, that has the naughty words in it. So there are many ways that could be a duplicate or not a duplicate. Um, but then you just hit delete and it would delete the song and then you get another um, uh, uh, question if you want to delete it from iTunes as well. So it can remove the song, but it'll remove the song from the computer but leave it in iTunes. So if you do have iTunes Match running, if you want to play that song again, it just downloads it from the cloud again. Mm -hmm. 
No, it doesn't. Uh, iTunes server doesn't have to be a Mac. There are several network uh, storage uh, drives. Synology has got a couple of them. Um, that's an iTunes music server. But of course, you know, a lot of people will will just set up an old Mac as their iTunes server and put a big hard drive on it. Um, yeah, a couple of uh, of blogs have done iTunes servers. Um, no, he used the Western Digital one. I know Synology has one. Um, several of the network hard drive companies make an iTunes server as part of their network hard drive. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, of um, articles and onlines. Um, you know, so, here's, so here's one right from Synology, how to use your Synology NAS. So basically a NAS or network attached storage is a box that's a computer and a hard drive and an Ethernet port all in one little box. Um, instead of having a computer and a monitor. A lot of people use a Mac Mini as their media server, especially when you connect it to a TV, and then you can rip all your DVDs on it and watch movies from the computer rather than needing to put physical disks in. So just like we ripped all our CDs into the computer to play, you can do the same thing with movies and play them from the computer. Yeah. Yeah, recording recording cassette tapes. Um, the quick and dirty way to do it is to have a tape player and hold it up to the computer's microphone. Uh, it, it'll be echoey, like you know, kind of kind of like a speakerphone. Um, or you can use an audio capture card, which uh, this this is a USB audio capture box. This is the Griffin iMic. Um, there and there are several other ones that you take the uh, you uh, well. Depending on your Mac, many of the Macs have an audio input jack um, on the side. Looks like a headphone jack. A lot of Macs have two of those. One's in, one's out. Um, and then for a while, the, the Macs had one jack, but it was an in and an out. Now the latest Macs, it's, it's only an out. So there's no audio in anymore um, on, on, the, on a lot of the latest, especially laptops. Um, so you need to have an external USB audio adapter in order to um, plug in your tape player to the USB and then you would use a program like Audacity, which is, which is a free audio editor, uh, to record that into your computer. There are also um, cassette record computer. There are also standalone boxes. I know Crosby has a few of them. Um, ion, I have an ion turntable, and it's a box that you basically put your tapes in, or uh, I've, got, I've got the ion turntable for, for uh, LPs, and it's got a USB port on it, and you plug that into your computer, and then use Audacity to uh, record it. Yep. There are also a couple of them that have a, um, is it Crosley, I think? They have a CD burner in them. So if you want, um, you can play a tape and hit record and put a blank CD in and you get a CD from your tape. Look. Yeah, the lot you get the noise, the pops, the hisses, the crackles. And so that's one reason you would want to use something like Audacity um, in order to clean that up. And um, I lost my Audacity link. There it is. Uh, to clean that up and remove the noise. I use Audacity to edit uh, the CIDR files, to edit the Soundbytes files, um, and it's, it's a free editing program uh, from uh, audacityteam.org, and it's one of the better audio recorders uh, and audio editors, especially for free. Uh, Apple has their professional, um, um, while GarageBand is the sort of prosumer version that comes with the Mac to edit music, and also play instruments. GarageBand kind of does too many things. Um, you can have real instruments that you play into it, guitars and drums and keyboards and whatnot. It has soft instruments that you play, so you can mimic a keyboard or guitar or drum. It can record uh, vocal or, or audio, other audio import and then, and then add it all that together. So it's, it's more of a mixing studio than it is just a recorder. 
Uh, and then they have their, their higher end version is uh, Logic um, for professional audio editing, multiple track. Audacity does two tracks, which stereo, that's what most people need. Uh, GarageBand, I think, can do 64 tracks. So you can have 64 different instruments plugged in at the same time. And you, if you've ever seen pictures of a professional audio sound studio, you, you see that giant board with you know, sliders and knobbies, and each one of those sliders is one instrument out in the orchestra. Um, so how do you clean it? Audacity has a noise clean feature where you, you pick a bit of noise and it, it learns that noise and then removes it from the rest of the audio. Um, that's sort of an automatic way to do it. You, you can l go through you know, uh, uh, bit by bit, sound by sound, and, and bring, bring down the levels. And, and there, there's different c controls for normalizing and leveling and, and removing noise that are, that are built in to um, uh, try to remove noise from a recording that already has noise in it. Well, there's, there's some of that as well. You can decide how you want to record it. Um, generally, I record as an MP3 because uh, I don't do much editing with it, and the files are smaller. Um, so I've been going for an hour and 12 minutes, and my recording is 50 megs. If I record as an AIF, which is uncompressed, um, it's uh, 700 gigs an hour, um, which takes up a, a lot of space. Um, and um, um, But you get no loss when you do the editing because it's already lossless to open it up when you do your editing. Yeah, I remember Final Vinyl, and then and then they were shipping Audacity for a while too. So that's uh, that's I. Oops, no, stop making emails. I'm I'm hitting uh, the send an email button, not a new tab button. Command L. Uh, Turntable. It's yeah, it's real time. So if you have an album that's an hour to play, it takes an hour to bring it in. Yep. Now, Audacity, Audacity does have a, um, an album recording mode where the gap between tracks, it'll sense that and make a separate recording. Because otherwise, you get one long hour recording, and then you have to break this, the individual songs out yourself. So that's one thing they do. Audacity also has a, um, a timer mode. So if you want to record a uh, internet TV show or, or in, internet radio show, I, I do that with sound bites too. That you can tell it, you know, at, at noon start recording and at two stop recording. So I have a, a backup of my recordings because when I record sound bites live at the uh, on the air. All right. Any last question, Frank? Oh, I'm sorry. It, uh, we were missed, skipped you a couple of times. So why should you get an iPhone 8 versus a 10? Um, if you don't want to spend the extra 300 bucks, <laughs> is one reason. Um, and what's interesting is Apple is still selling the iPhone 6 because it has a headphone jack, and the iPhone 5 because it's cheaper. Um, iPhone. Um, so with, so with the different versions, the, pretty much the main difference between the 8 and the 10 is the um, um, price. And iPhone 10 uses the Face ID versus iPhone 8 with a Touch ID. So if you really like having the home button, so that's one thing on the 10. You know, on, 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 on all the previous phones, there's a button you push that takes you back home. Um, we have started seeing it on iOS 11. You now swipe up from the, the bottom. Nope, see, that's control center. So on the old iPhone, swipe up from the bottom is control center. On the iPhone 10, it's swiped down from the corner. So I'm annoyed that they changed that. Uh, on the older iPhones, you double press the home button and you get into your um, task switcher. On the iPhone 10, because there's no home button, you swipe up from the bottom. And because home is swipe up from the bottom, that's why they moved control center to be swiped down from the top. So things are different, and so it, it, it'll take a little bit of getting used to. I'm still trying to get used to the, the um, uh, swipe up from the bottom to get to the control center, and it's different on my older iPod that's still running an old OS 
So I don't have Touch ID and I don't have the, the um, uh, um, um, task switcher the same. So I've got several generations of OS that make it a little bit trickier. The, the 8 and 10 camera, I think, are very similar. Um, Apple does have this nice um, uh, comparison. So let's see. So this is between an 8 and a 10. So the 10 is 5.8 inches, and the 8 Plus is 5.5 inches. So that's where you get the bigger screen um, in the smaller package. Um, same, uh, uh, same front-facing camera. Let's see if it's the same rear-facing camera. I think it might have a faster lens camera. There we are. 1.8, yeah, so on the iPhone 8, it's a 2.8 aperture. On the iPhone 10, it's a 2.4. Uh, quad two yeah, portrait mode. So everything else is, is the same there. 4K, OIS. That's all the same. Now, if we change that from the Plus to the iPhone 8, so it's the smaller phone. So now you're looking at two phones that are physically nearly the same size, but the iPhone 10 has a, has a screen that's an inch bigger. The iPhone 10 has um, uh, two cameras, wide, uh, wide angle and telephoto. And in the... Um, now this is, so that's the same 1.8 in the wide angle, but the 2.4 on the telephoto. Uh, it's basically done automatically. It looks at your, your scene and uses both cameras as it needs to, and when you tap on the thing you want to focus on uh, or, or do your pinch and zoom on the camera, it decides which lens to use automatically. Yeah. Well, on, on, on the non-plus cameras, it's a digital zoom. So it's, it's, it's zooming in digitally and throwing away pixels. On the plus and the 10, there's a second camera there. So you're doing an optical zoom. So you get better pictures that way. Yeah, the, all the, the, the plus phones have two cameras. And, and the iPhone 10. Now, the Plus phone has, uh, the cameras are side by side. We don't know if this makes much of a difference. Um, and on the 10, they're up and down. We don't know if that's going to make any difference in practice. Yeah. Yeah, if if you swipe in the wrong place, you change it, change modes. I didn't know I was doing it until I got home and started looking over my pictures. Oh my god! It uh, I, I haven't found a way to lock, lock it in. Um, it locks. Yeah, there, there, there's. I don't think there's a way to not change it other than not swipe. Um. Um. Let's see. Uh, how, how can I ask Google? Camera, so square, square, uh, video, camera modes. All right, so we swipe and that gives us the camera modes. This may give us a way to not do camera modes. So we, at, you've got the different modes at the bottom. So if you swipe down here, you're going to switch modes between video, slow-mo, photo, and square. Um, Yep. I find myself accidentally getting into um, video, mo <coughs> video mode. Uh, and I don't know of any way to, to, to do that. Um, what you could use is a different app that doesn't have those features. So instead of using the Apple camera app, you could use a different app. Yeah. All right, any last questions? Uh, Frank? Yep. Yep. 
so Dropbox has a couple of features. Um, 